Hi, I'm Diane, and this is Bringing the Zoo to You. Welcome to the Clouded Leopard Rainforest. We're here today to meet some of the reptiles that we have in our exhibit. All the reptiles that we have are animals that are from Asia. So we have a few animals that we'll be meeting this morning. The first one is our Mandarin trinket snake. This guy is from Asia, like all of our other animals. Um, they live in forested areas and they eat rodents um, in the wild and also here at the zoo. These animals prefer a cooler temperature, which is good for us here in the Chicagoland area. Although all of our reptiles do have heat lamps and heat sources, so they can choose the temperature that they want to be in in their exhibit. Um, this animal spends a lot of time resting because in the wild, he would be resting to conserve energy when he's not out hunting. Uh, like most reptiles, he has a very low metabolism, so he can't afford to spend a lot of extra energy moving around when he's not hunting. Here in the zoo, to keep his environment fresh and interesting, um, we do change around his exhibit, so we might move some of the items give him new plants, um, rearrange some of his logs or hiding places. And when we do that, he generally becomes super active and he'll cruise all around and explore. Right now, he's kind of having his, his resting phase, um, but you can see his beautiful pattern, and what a beautiful snake he is. He's pretty full grown. Um, this species can get up to about four feet in length. How long has he been here at the Clouded Leopard Rainforest? Um, this particular animal has been here at this exhibit for three years. He actually was at the zoo uh, for a couple of years before that in the reptile department. Um, but in the time that he's been here in the Fragile Kingdom, he's nearly doubled in size because he was a young animal when we got him. So he was still growing. Um, but now he's getting closer to his adult size which would be around four feet at the most. Does he have a favorite food? Um, the things that we feed them are all mice. So that, of course, is his favorite food. Um, <laughs> he does he does like them and has a good appetite, as you know, he since he's grown so much in the last three years. Um, he does uh, sometimes decide he might not want to eat particularly if reptiles are about to shed their skin, um, they will stop eating maybe for a couple of weeks and then um, he might decide not to eat during that time. But usually he's a good eater. Good, does he have a name? Um, he doesn't really have an official name. We call him Tangle because he often rests, as you can see he's doing right now, kind of uh, tangled up with his own self, uh, but it's not really an official name. It's just kind of a pet name we have for him. But you can see he's very pretty. He's um, a pretty uh, nice animal for us to work with. He's very calm and seems pretty happy in his environment. And as you can see, you know, he's very striking to look at. So uh, people really like seeing him. He's really cool. Why might a snake have uh, such brilliant colors like this? Um, in the wild, a lot of brightly colored snakes are ones that are venomous. This species is not venomous though, so it is a little bit um, unusual that they would be so brightly colored. It might be somewhat as a warning to other species. Uh, some snakes will have bright colors to mimic other venomous species. I'm not sure if that's the case with this species, um, but also because they live in the forest like those black and yellow bands might somewhat blend into fallen dried leaves and things like that. So if he was out in his natural environment, it might not appear you know, quite as obvious as he does here in the zoo. Okay, um, so for our next animal that we're going to look at, we're going to see our Indo-Chinese box turtle. This is another younger animal. He's only six years old. And you can see he just got his brunch for the day. 
and you can see him going after his fruit. Uh, all box turtles are omnivores, which means that they eat fruits and vegetables. So some of his favorite food items that you may have just seen the keeper put in there for him is the earthworms, which is something he would eat in the wild. Um, if he can figure out how to get rid of that piece of fruit out of his mouth <laughs> to get to that earthworm, he'll probably eat that right away. The earthworms are his very favorite food. He really, really likes them. But he also really likes fruits and vegetables that are red. Um, a lot of turtles are really attracted to the color red, so they really like tomatoes and strawberries and things like that. Um, this animal really loves those red foods, but even more than that, he loves those worms. Uh, what types of vegetables do they get? Um, they get a variety. They always get greens um, on salad days when they get salads. Um, sometimes they get a variety of other things. Um, like you can see today, he's got some cucumber. Um, sometimes they'll get tomato. Sometimes he'll get a little piece of strawberry. Um, he can get pretty much anything that's not loaded with sugar. Uh, you can see he's not a very graceful eater. <laughs> You know, since he doesn't have hands, he's got to really work to get stuff moved around there. Um, yeah, it's, it's really neat to see him use his claws to, um, to kind of break the food up so it fits in his mouth better. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the really most fun things is that we do for him is in the warmer weather, uh, he gets to go outside. So we have some places where we can take him onto the grass where we know the grass has not been treated with any chemicals. And when the temperature is appropriate for him, we can take him outside and get him some exercise um, in a little fenced in area. And we do have to put him in a little fenced in area because he, for, for a turtle, he's really fast. Um, and you spend the whole time chasing him if he wasn't contained. But he really enjoys that. And of course it's good for him um, mentally and it's good for him physically to get a lot of exercise. And that's one of his most favorite activities. While the zoo's been closed, since it's too cold to take him outside, we've been able to take him out periodically and let him exercise on the public spaces in the building. Uh, so he really thinks that's fun and he likes to <laughs> explore around and check things out. I don't think he's seen that worm yet. I really or thought it he would saw not it, be then there he went anymore. after the apple. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, it's now that it's partially concealed i'm not yes. sure he realizes that it's there it's behind the lettuce um, so yeah we have to watch carefully when we give him those worms because if he doesn't see it and it gets into the substrate of the exhibit he may not find it and then uh, you know he misses out on something that's part of his diet that he should be eating mm -hmm. does he get other insects as well he does get crickets as well um, he likes them, but you know he has a little more difficulty catching them than he does with the worm. Um, oh, those crickets are too fast for him. Huh? They're very, they're very fast. Oh. But we leave the crickets in there, so it, you know it provides some activity for him to um, chase them and finally catch them. You know when they're resting someplace where he can get mm -hmm. to them. Uh, but he's a neat little guy. Um, this species is actually um, very endangered and like all the species in this building, they're from Asia. Um, so if you ever see an Indo-Chinese box turtle for sale somewhere, uh, don't buy it. It should not be a pet. Um, they're a very, very endangered species. But he's doing great here in the zoo. Um, he's very active when we change his exhibit around. He really motors around and explores mm -hmm. things as well. Um, and he's a pretty little guy and he has a really cool shell and he's just a really really personable individual and he'll interact with the keepers um, when we take him out for the walks you know he really enjoys it so um, sometime in the summer if it gets nice enough sometimes when we take him out uh, people can see him from a distance and uh, admire his beauty outdoors <laughs> It is a little difficult to tell on video. So about how big is he? Uh, he's about six to eight inches long, depending where you measure from, the head <laughs> or the, the end of his shell. Um, 
he weighs about a pound or so uh, and he's still growing as well so he's only six years old and uh, like most turtles you know they will continue to grow for many years uh, i think now he's actually looking at the camera because <laughs> yeah. he's he's frozen in place he realized that he's unflattering uh holding that fruit in his mouth well, none of us like to be filmed eating no we don't <laughs> um, so the next species that we're going to look at here um, are, are the tentacled snakes. We have a group of five tentacled snakes, and they're in this exhibit here. Um, you can see the different individuals clinging to the plants in the exhibit. They're uh, a variety of sizes because there are two animals that are a little bit older than the others. And this species is called tentacled snakes because if you look at their nose, I'm not sure if, if we can get a good shot up close, maybe this guy here. Um, they have these two little tentacle-like protrusions at the end of their nose. So that's why they're called tentacle snakes. Um, they are completely aquatic. So as you can see here, um, they, their exhibit is all water. There are, is um, an upper area because they're reptiles, they do need to breathe air. So they are able to get up to the air at the top um, but by choice, they rest all in the water. Uh, they like to cling to things, kind of like a seahorse, if you've ever seen a seahorse. Um, you can see this animal on the left that's in that plant there. Um, they'll often use their tail to wrap around the plants. And if you didn't know and you were in the wild and you were a fish, um, you might think that animal was part of the plant. And then when you are a fish and you swim by, that snake may reach out and grab you and eat you up um, because you did not even realize it was there. So yeah. their hunting strategy in the wild is that they blend in, they want to look like part of the environment, and then uh, they attack a fish when it comes by. The fish does not even realize that there's a snake present. Um, I'm not sure that people even notice them here sometimes. They walk right past because they look like they're just sticks. They do, um, and we do keep some sticks in there usually for them to cling on to, uh, just because that's part of their natural behavior. So sometimes people don't even realize that they're there or don't realize how many animals mm -hmm. are there. Yeah. Um, so you can see we keep some fish in the tank with them all the time. Every few days we need to add a few more fish because some of these snakes are really still growing and they do go through a lot of fish in a week. So the fish are always in there. Um, we feed the fish every day, and then the snakes catch this fish on their own and eat the fish uh, whenever they're hungry. Wait, so, so the fish in here right now, that's their food? That's their food. Oh. So after a while, um, you, you'll notice that, you know, there's a few less fish the following day. So <laughs> you know that the snake, and the snakes are growing, so you could figure out where they went. Um, <laughs> what types of fish are they? These are mollies, like you would get at a pet store. Ah, okay. Uh, the other really cool thing about these snakes is that they give birth uh, to live babies. So this past fall, we actually had a birth in this exhibit for the first time in a couple of years. And the largest snake that's in here, um, sort of hard to tell the individuals apart because they're in the water, but the largest animal that's in here um, started getting really big. So um, we realized she was going to give birth. And then one morning we came to work and there were six extra snakes in here. <laughs> um, and the little babies you know, are just like miniature adults. They were really super cute. They were smaller around than a pencil, um, probably about the length of a pencil. Wow. So um, they're born completely swimming and alive. Um, we did need to remove them from this tank because they can't eat those giant fish. You know, they're way too big for them to eat. So they did go um, to be reared elsewhere in the zoo where they could receive their proper size food. That was good for them, but um, they were really cute it was really fun to have them born. How often can they hold, or not how often, how long can they hold their breath? 
Uh, they can stay down there under the water for, for a long time. Sometimes we'll walk by here and the snake will be in the same place that it's been in for, you know, an hour. Um, I'm not sure if they come up in between to get air and we just don't see them, but they do stay down for a really long time. Those, those ones that are down on the bottom probably will not go up for air while we're standing here unless it's because they want to catch fish. Hmm. But they're, they're a really neat species. They're, like I said, they're hard for us to tell apart even, but if you look at them, they all have these um, patterns of, um, not really diamonds, but almost little diamonds on them. And each one is a little bit different. Like I mentioned, two of the animals are older, so they're a little bit larger. Um, but the three smaller animals, you know, we have to try and tell them apart by uh, their patterns. So they are each slightly different, um, but still pretty similar. Um, how big is the biggest one? Uh, the biggest one is probably about a foot and a half to two mm -hmm. feet long. Probably, probably more like a foot and a half. Okay. Um, and then it's pretty a full-size animal. The oldest animal that's in, the two older animals that are in here are, um, I think they're six years old. So they probably will not grow much more, if at all. They're pretty full-size. Well, thank you for joining us today to visit our reptiles here at the Clouded Leopard Rainforest. We enjoyed having you. Uh, and I hope that the next time you're able to visit us, you'll come and see our reptile friends. Have a great day.